Hello friends, I made this for. My name is Lauren and I'm still getting settled in my new studio. It's a little blank and I am, you know, not quite feeling it, but we're gonna get through it because I feel so bad I wasn't here to talk to you about the the eclipse. It's been in a, almost a whole eclipse season and I haven't done anything about it. I haven't talked about any of this shit. So grab your coffee and sit down with me. And if you've never been here before, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff so you can stay connected and all of that if you enjoy how I talk about astrology. And if you've been here before, hi, hello, welcome back. I miss you. So good to see you. You look really good today. It looks like you've been getting lots of sleep, and I love that for you. And if you haven't been getting lots of sleep, take a nap. Um, today, I want to talk about rituals for eclipse season. You've probably heard the word on the street is do not manifest with the eclipse and I could not agree more. But there are tons of other rituals that you can do or just little things that you can um, incorporate into your eclipse season that are really powerful, really supportive, and have nothing to do with manifesting. You've probably seen so many people talk about it, probably have come across other witches and of the like talking about it, but I just wanted to give you my opinion on what could be supportive. So what's number one? Well, number one is don't manifest on the eclipse. And you probably heard why, but just in case, I'll give you a little bit extra insight. The eclipse is one of those things where there is a lot happening, and that means you don't really need to do anything. The thing that's most important for you is to notice, bring awareness. I always say that to folks that I work with, and I'm going to push it here as well. Everything that's happening in the stars is happening whether you do anything or not. And the truth is, if you try to get involved, it's almost like too many cooks in the kitchen. If you start lighting your candles and working on manifesting different things throughout your, your eclipse season, you might really find that you're doing too much. There might be shit that's coming up. You might have things blow up in your face. It's kind of like the best time to have a reaction that's like the monkey's paw. So to avoid that, avoid manifesting. Replace it with journaling. Make it a daily practice if possible, but if you only have the actual eclipses, the next one being the eighth, it's a full moon, take out your journal and just do some free writing. Stream of consciousness, morning pages, whatever it is for you, do it. Because the more you write, the more you will have notes to look back on in six months. Because here's the thing about eclipse seasons. They are six months of work. Every six months, we enter eclipse season. And so what comes up in one eclipse season might rear its ugly head or beautiful head in the next six months. So let's think about where we're gonna be six months from now. We're gonna be in Taurus season, spring. This is when there is death, that is when there is rebirth, and there might be some really important messages that you need, that you are learning now, that you might not be able to make sense of, but you may be able to make sense of it when we are in that rebirth process. Which brings me to a point I probably should have started on. Our eclipse seasons are in Scorpio and Taurus. These are where our little station things are at, okay? Every two and a half years, we switch where our nodes are. We switch where our focus is and we switch where eclipse season is going to be. I remember being aware of the eclipse season for the first time when our balance was between the, you know, not obstacles, but opposition. There it is. The opposition was ca Cancer and Capricorn. And as I a Cancer rising and Capricorn in like five other planets, that eclipse season really hit me. So eclipse season might not affect 
everyone the same way, but it's certainly going to have some impact in your life. So here's something that can be really important to do as well. Take out your chart, see where these eclipses are hitting different places in your chart. One of the things that I know about my chart is that my, I don't have any planets in Taurus. That is kind of an empty uh, area. That doesn't mean that it doesn't do anything, but I'm feeling more of the shit that's going on in my Scorpio. My Scorpio would have to be, I believe it's Vesta, my um, little asteroid Vesta, and Pluto. So those are the areas of my life that might be getting activated, right? Might be getting activated, might be feeling those areas a little bit more. But of course, a lot of us have Pluto and Scorpio, so a whole generation is feeling that bullshit. So take out your chart and just see where you notice any patterns as well. It's not a ritual, sure, but it is. Anytime you look at your chart, it is. Let's be honest here. For real, for real. I'm not fucking with you here. So that's one avenue you can do some work around. The third is to take baths, rest. Use eclipse season as a invitation to do lots of self-care. That is a ritual that doesn't harm anyone and you probably need it more than ever, right? Highly recommend pulling out some of your favorite crystals that will not dissolve in water um, and put those in a bath with some salt. Some Epsom salts or pink Himalayan salt. These things will be really nice to just kind of help decompress, but also because the nodes are in Scorpio and Taurus, that Scorpio, which is water, can be a great way to connect to that Scorpio energy is by taking some sacred baths, put in some uh, carrier oil of your choice, maybe coconut, avocado oil, or any of those that feel good on you, and add some essentials. Any of the scents that you feel called to. I personally love clove for this time of year. Cinnamon and nutmeg, those warm, invigorating smells can be really comforting, especially as we start to transition from fall into winter, right? So, those are just some ideas. What else can you do? Well, again, I wouldn't manifest, but if you are not into doing a daily pull, maybe just having a daily pull and using that in tandem with your writing. So maybe every day or every night, pull a card and write what's coming up for you around that card. Journal what's happening in your day that might relate to that card. Again, this is all so that you can notice any patterns that come up six months from now, which is going to be Taurus season. Our nodes are going to be in Taurus and Scorpio for the next two and a half years. So if you haven't started this process of using this sort of work yet, it's never too late to get started into doing some journaling and some writing to start noticing those patterns. Remember, we don't have to manifest, we don't have to do really any work per se, but we can notice patterns. And that's actually going to be the most important thing and the thing I really wanna leave you with. There's one thing you wanna do during this season, notice patterns. These patterns are not going away. They are here with us for the next two years. So we might as well sit with it and really notice so we can bring more awareness. Ultimately, we don't have to do the work, but we do have to slow down and notice. A great way to slow down is make sure you're doing lots of self-care, making nice tea for yourself, drinking that. And just sitting with some mindful gratitude can be a great way of just simply bringing awareness and focusing in your energy. So with that said, that's where I'm going to leave you. Um, definitely look at where Scorpio and uh, Taurus are in your chart. See where they might be activated right now. What sort of houses are those signs in? What might that be showing you or sharing with you? 
all of that good stuff. I believe Taurus for me is in my 10th house or no, Taurus is in my 11th house. So community. So that might be an area I want to look at, even though it's a empty space doesn't mean that there's nothing going on there. It just means there's not a planet. It's fine. But yeah, let me know down below. How has eclipse season been treating you? I'm going to be making another video about the full moon. So don't worry, that's coming out soon. Um, but until then, thank you for coming. If you want to support me, check out the links down below in my, my link tree where you can find my Patreon. You can find all the fucking things that I do, including Instagram. I'm an artist, art teacher, and art ritual facilitator. But anyway, drink some coffee and have a great day. Bye.